Gospel of John, chapter 5, we'll begin reading at verse number 1. And it reads, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the move of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity for thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Thus ends the reading. My brothers and sisters, for just a moment in time, I'd like to preach from the subject, The Perfect Setup for a Miracle. The perfect setup for a miracle. Saints of God, have you ever found yourself standing in the need of a divine miracle? Have you ever found yourself living with a condition, a situation, a circumstance, an illness that only God could deliver you from? Better yet, have you ever found yourself stuck in what seems to be an impossible situation. Have you ever found yourself standing in the need of healing, but not able to be healed? Have you ever found yourself asking the question, walking the floor at night, asking the question, when is my turn? Are you tired of every single time it it looks like it's your turn, somebody else steps over you? My brothers and sisters, we can all relate to this impotent man. Yes, sir. So close, but yet so far away. Uh, So close, but yet so far away. Child of God, impossible situations create the perfect setup for a divine miracle. You you, you know what a miracle is. A miracle is a supernatural healing, a supernatural blessing that only God can give. Yes, we understand that miracles, my brothers and sisters watching me via Facebook and hearing me on free conference call, miracles come in all shapes, sizes, and all kinds of ways God can stage a miracle. I'm here to tell somebody it doesn't matter how dark the night and how long the day and how long the pain and how long the suffering. I stopped by this morning to inform you that your present situation, be it dark, be it gloomy, is the perfect setup, God help me, for a divine miracle. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. I'm here to tell somebody Corona doesn't stand a chance in the hospital of Jesus. Uh, the flu doesn't stand a chance in the hospital of Jesus. Right. My brothers and sisters, when we arrive on the scene of our text, uh, here we find Jesus headed in up to Jerusalem for an annual feast day. Many scholars argue about the particular feast day. Some say uh, it was Passover, and some say it was Pentecost, and some say it was another feast.
feast, but it really doesn't matter about what day it was. Oh my God, uh -huh. it really doesn't matter. I'm not here to debate uh, what day and what time. However, one thing that we do know for sure is that Jesus, help me Holy Ghost, was in the city. Uh, Jesus shows up, headed into the temple for the feast. But he's not too busy, uh, Reverend Bailey, to heal, set free, yeah. and to speak a word of deliverance uh, uh, to an impotent man. Uh, who wouldn't serve a God like that? My brothers and sisters, uh, much isn't said uh, about this impotent man. The text tells us a few things that we know for certain. He was, the text refers to him as a certain man. That's, that's all it gives us. It's a certain man, but however, we do know some things for sure. He's been impotent, my God, for 38 years, and, and he's been at this place, depending on other people, help me, Holy Ghost, to move and to get him into a place of healing. But we also know that, that his bed, Good God, his bed yeah. is in the wrong place. Wrong place. You, you'll catch that later on tonight. His bed is in the wrong place. Jesus shows up and sees a paralyzed man. He sees the need and he sees the perfect stage for a miracle. He's not concerned with the tradition of the day. He's not concerned with it being the Sabbath. Jesus sees a man. He sees a brother. He sees a, the perfect, the perfect setup to stage. Oh God, a miracle! A miracle! Uh, no, 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 my brothers and sisters, don't, 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 don't drive past that. Jesus didn't know the man's name, but he knew him. Good God, he knew him in the spirit. Uh, thank God for the spirit. Uh, child of God, you must understand that when Jesus shows up, uh, uh, what is unimportant becomes now important. When Jesus shows up, what's been looked down now is being looked at. When Jesus shows up, the cricket becomes straight. When Jesus shows up, the bowed down head now becomes lifted. When Jesus shows up, tradition goes out of the window. When Jesus, when Jesus shows up, yeah. the forgotten becomes the apple in his eye. When Jesus Preach, shows Doc. up, good God, I wish I had a church here. Preach, when Doc. Jesus shows up, the blind now can see. Yeah. When Jesus shows up, the wayward now is become Preach. Free. When Jesus shows up. Yes, sir. Uh, God help me when Jesus showed up. Yes, beloved, this is the perfect setup for a miracle. Ha, ha, it took a miracle. And Jesus sees the moment ha, to stage a miracle, my brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that Jesus, Reverend Bailey, he didn't respond like church folk. Oh, come on. You ain't in the house. Ha, he doesn't respond like some church folk. Uh, he, 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 sometimes we, we see a need, but we won't respond. We see the need, but we keep walking by. We see the folks hanging out by our churches, but no, we won't stop. We see the homeless man. We see the prostitute. We see the mother struggling, but yet, call it, Doc. we won't. Huh? We don't stop. I'm so glad Jesus in this text he, he only went down to lift him up. <laughs> he went down on his knee to talk to this man, to have a conversation, my God. And he looked down and he knelt down to lift him up. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus shows up huh, and presents an unexpected miracle, three things happen. Huh, number one, he asks a strange question. Yeah. Huh. He moves beyond tradition, folks. Huh. And he asks a strange question. Child of God, with the help of my spiritual imagination, I was able to paint a picture of the scene of our text in my mind's eye. Yes, I imagine Jesus showing up, headed into the temple, and, and being moved by the scene of the five porches. And the pool, Jesus, Jesus, he, he, he's never too busy huh, for 
the least of these. Huh? Church, if, if, if right there in your home, if, if you don't, don't mind, in, indulge me for a second and close your eyes and imagine five porches and a pool. Five porches with nothing but sick folk huh, hanging on these porches. And folks that have been here day after day, the five porches full of lame people, blind people, halted people, folks yeah. waiting on the move of the water. Uh, they've been kept out here. But uh, yes, I'm sure you've heard this term, birds of a feather Fly. flock together. Yes, now. Uh, it has to be something said about sick folk hanging around sick folk. Uh, I will say that again. It says birds of a feather, good God, flock together. And it's got to be something said that sick folk want to keep dwelling around sick folk. Huh. God gave me a revelation about this text, and here it is. Huh. Here it is. Many of our churches and our communities huh. Huh. have become reflective of these five porches. Help me, Holy Ghost. They, they become reflective of these churches. Sunday after Sunday, impotent people show up but we failed them because they leave the same. My God. Uh, I'm going to say that again. Many of our churches and our communities have become reflective of these five porches. They've become the, the dwelling place, the nesting place for impotent people. But we failed them because Sunday after Sunday, help me, Holy Ghost, they come and they never get what they need. Uh, 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 they come and they Reverend Bailey, never have a divine encounter uh, with the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Uh, now you must understand uh, that based on the tradition, uh, uh, Jesus ain't supposed to be healing nobody. Uh, ain't no man supposed to be walking around with no bed walking. My God. But Jesus is not concerned about tradition. No. Huh. And I believe that's a word for today. If we are going to get through this pandemic, Mount Zion, if you are going to get through this pandemic, world, church, whoever is listening, if you are going to get through this pandemic, if we, the body of Christ, is going to get through, help me, Holy Ghost, this pandemic, we gotta lose these traditions. Yeah. Huh. We gotta take the handcuffs off. Huh. Yes, Ministry has to look different from this day forward. Huh. We can't keep doing it like we used to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can't keep doing it because it worked in 1960 and in 1919. The present age demands. Huh. The present age demands that we move from tradition. Huh. Jesus asked this man that he encounters one question. He says, wilt thou be made whole? That's the question for the hour. That's the question for the day. Wilt thou be made whole? I don't know who's listening to me. I don't know where you are. You may be convalescing. You may be quarantined. You may be scared to go outside. You may be suffering your own self with something that you've been dealing with. But the question for the hour yes, is, will thou be yes. made yes. whole? Yes. <laughs> Don't know who I'm talking to, but will thou be made whole? Some of you are looking for drugs to make you whole. Help me, Holy Ghost, sir. Some of you are looking in a lifestyle to make you whole. Huh? Somebody's looking in a man and a woman to make you whole. Somebody's looking in a career to make you whole. Call but it, I God. stop by here today Preach, God. with God to tell somebody only God can make you yeah. whole. Yeah. Huh? This moves me huh? to the second point. Huh? Jesus moves past this man. He moves past his excuses. Huh. When he presents a miracle and 
shows up and presents an unexpected miracle, he's not worried about your excuses. He looks past the man's excuses because in the text, the man says, Sir, I ain't got nobody. Oh, you need to camp out here for a minute because some of you are dependent on other people. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Some of you are dependent on a man huh, to bring your deliverance. Some of you are dependent on Trump to bring your deliverance. Come on, preacher. Some of you are dependent on a stimulus package to bring your deliverance. Come on, preacher. But only true, good God, only true deliverance yes. comes from Jesus. Yes, huh. yes sir. Huh. Huh. What's keeping you, my brother? My sister, what's keeping you who I'm talking to? You, no, 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 you. You who are who, who, who listening. What's keeping you from being set free on today? What's keeping you, good God, stuck at the pool? What's keeping you? What's got your eyes so fixed? Help me, God. Huh, that you can't even look and see the divine healer standing in front of you. Huh, this man had his eyes fixed on the pool. And he tells Jesus, he says, he says, sir, every time I have no man to, 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 to get me down to this pool. He says, every time, help me, Lord, every time it looks like, I'm going to put it in Brown's term, every time it looks like, Lord, it's my time. It's my time to be blessed. Every time it looks like, it's just about to be my time. This man says, sir, he doesn't even know who he's talking to, but he says, sir, sometime, every time, another one comes and steps uh, over, steps in front of me. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus is not worried about this excuse. Jesus is more after. Uh, oh, holy Lord. Jesus here is after. Do you want to be made? Oh. Wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the question. Uh, you who are listening to me, do you want to be made? Well, I stopped by here to encourage somebody. Huh, don't look at your condition. Don't look at huh, the odds stacked up against you. Don't look at, oh, it seems like everybody is dying around me. But fix your faith and fix your eyes on oh. Jesus is the only one, huh? my brothers and sisters, Jesus is the only one that can save you. Jesus is the only one that can yes, heal you. Yes. Huh. 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 I'm so glad, Reverend Bailey, that Jesus looked past my, even my own excuses. Yes, sir. Huh. The daily excuses I make. Oh, God, but he's still looks past my excuses. Huh. Huh. Somebody's been stepped over. You feel like you've been forgotten about. You feel it's been so long. The night has been so long. My the God. day has been so long. It's been years. Huh. Huh. The Lord had to deal with me. Huh. He had to deal with me with suffering, Reverend Bailey. Mm -hmm. huh. Going through a doctoral degree. <laughs> Oh, God, hold me. How he had to deal with me. Because I said, Lord, when? Good God, when, when? is when? I don't know who I'm talking to. Yes, sir. But the Lord had to deal with me. And said, I said, Lord, when is when? And the Lord took me over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5 and 10. For it tells us about suffering. Come on. That after you suffered a while. <laughs> After you've been doing for a while, the God of all grace, huh, yes, he will perfect you, and he will establish you, and strengthen you, and sell you. Yeah. Huh, huh. Finally, beloved, 
Jesus, our Lord Christ, huh, arrives in Jerusalem. He sees the perfect setup for a miracle. He meets huh, a man that has been hanging around sick folk. Sick folk. Huh. He's hanging out huh, at the, the pool of Bethesda. He's hanging out at the house of mercy for 38 years. Jesus questions the man. He asks him a strange question, but it was a life-changing question. He asks him, How do you want to be made whole? The man responds with excuses. Jesus looked past his excuses. He speaks a word of deliverance on the Sabbath. And finally, the man takes up his bed and he walks. Yes, sir. Oh, mm. huh. see, 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 if, if man would have done it, good God. Good God. Maybe, just maybe, Reverend Bailey, he would have left his bed right there by the pool. Yeah. Because maybe he would have, so maybe he could have come back around. But Jesus, good God, Jesus says, take up thy bed. And walk. Huh? Which means that today that is over. T today it ends. Today the condition is final. I don't know who I'm talking to, but today is a good day to rise up in your spirit. Rise up in your house. Rise up on your job. Take up your bed. Preach that. God and walk. Huh? 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 This is a good day to take up your bed. And walk. This man, Good this day. impotent man, he moves by faith. His faith got him to walk in. Good God. This faith got him looking differently. And it's because of his faith that he believed. Oh, God help me here. Oh, immediately it happened. I don't know who I'm talking to, but but immediately God, God can do the thing just like that. It, it, quicker than at once, quicker than a second, just like that. God can heal you. God can save you. God can deliver you. God can God. Uh, yes. set you free. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, stop looking at that pool and take up your bed and walk. Come on now. Stop looking at your situation. Take up your bed and walk. Church, take up your bed and walk. Man, take up your bed and walk. Woman, take up your bed and walk. Child, take up your Preach. bed and walk. Drug addict, take up your bed and walk. Alcoholic, yes, take sir. up your bed and walk. Prostitute, take up your bed and walk. You ask me how can I take up my bed and walk? Because what Friday? Tell them that. On a hill called Calvary. Yes, sir. Jesus, good God. Tell the story, Doc. He hung him high. Yes, sir. He stretched him wide. He hung his head in the rocks of his shoulder. Yeah. He put him in. Joseph knew too. But somewhere I read, good God, the story didn't end that way. There's always a turnaround. There's always a comeback. Some people have counted you out. But why would the human to count you out when God wants to count you in?
be made whole. Will you be made whole today? Will you? Don't keep going through life, huh, business as usual. Huh, don't you see the signs of the time all around us? Huh, today is a good day huh, to be made whole. Today is a good day, good day. Huh, to try Jesus. Huh, huh, what do you have to lose huh, to try Jesus? Preach it. But you got everything today. Yes, sir. Huh. Yes. Yes. You got everything huh. Huh. today. When you face, as I close, when you face with what seems to be an impossible situation, huh. trust God. Trust Him. Yeah. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Some man, you're sitting there. You got more bills than money. Huh. Your family needs food. You don't know where it's going to come from. Oh, but I invite you to trust Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Huh. I invite you. I can't give you nothing else, but all I can give you huh, is what I know works. And what I know for sure works is Jesus. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You, you mother walking the floor at night. Say, but mother, not sure how ends are going to meet. Tell it, tell oh, it. Oh, try Jesus. Try it. I invite you to try Jesus. Huh. Somebody is listening to me. Huh. Contemplating suicide. Huh. Somebody is listening to me. And you're ready to call it quits on life. And you're ready to throw in the towel. Huh. But I invite you today, don't you do it. Don't you give up. I invite you to try Jesus. I invite you to try the one. God, I invite you to try the I am that I am. Don't you do it. There may be one who's listening to me. There may be one who's listening to me via the, the, the call-in system. You may be on Facebook right in your home and you never pro 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 profess Christ as your Lord and Savior. Oh God, today is a good day. A good day. A good day. Oh, you don't need nobody to lay hands on you to be healed, to be set free. Jesus spoke a word and immediately, how oh, it happened. Don't know who I'm talking to? Huh. You may be without a church home. I invite you to get to know it for yourself. Stand right where you are and say, Lord, huh, I, I'm a sinner. Huh, I've done wrong. Huh, I've done wrong and, and I've sinned against you. Huh, I've been wayward. Huh, but today I want to get it right. Huh, today I want to make you the Lord of my life. Huh, come into my heart. Come into my life. Make me what I am not. Lord, I want to be available to you. Don't know who you are. But if you prayed that prayer, that you believe that he died for your sins, you confess with your mouth that he died and was raised on the third day morning, you shall be saved. Yes, sir. It's no, it's no magic. It ain't no, no big secret to being saved. I invite you to find the church when we come out of quarantine, when we come out of being on lockdown, find a church that you can connect with, a church that's preaching the unadulterated truth, a church that where you can grow spiritually, huh, they will cultivate you. I invite you, I invite you to try Jesus. And wilt thou be made whole? God bless you.